Here's what nobody tells you about ChatGPT and Gemini. Everyone's asking, which AI is better? Wrong question. question. The real question is much simpler. Which one actually helps you get your work done better? Oftentimes we hear about benchmarks, but they don't truly tell the story of what you need to do your daily work. So for this video, we're going to compare ChatGPT and Gemini based on workflows that are actually applicable to you, rather than looking at all these different benchmarks or leaderboard charts between the two tools. I've tested both tools across various different projects. For example, content creation, research, and data analysis. This isn't just theory, this is day-to-day -day usage for folks like yourself. So by the end of this video, you'll know which AI tool is better for you specifically. We'll be covering when Gemini is the better tool to use, ChatGPT is the better tool to use, and a practical decision framework for deciding between the two. No benchmarks, no hype, just real world cases. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kian and I'm the AI productivity coach. And my goal is to help you become more productive using AI in your day to day. So if that sounds like you, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and join me on this journey. Both ChatGPT and Gemini are actually very similar in terms of their functionality. You'll see a lot of overlap in terms of what they can do and what the output looks like. But here's where I see the advantages of both when using them for specific use cases. So let's start with Google's Gemini. Gemini has gotten a bit of a glow up recently and it's really been seen as a proper competitor for ChatGPT right now. So let's start with Gemini's biggest advantage, which is its context window. Gemini 3 Pro can now handle up to 1 million tokens in one conversation. That's roughly 700,000 words, which is the equivalent to about 10 novels. You can upload really big PDFs, massive code bases, or months of video transcripts. And even then, it still won't lose track. So if you have huge amounts of data that you want to analyze or prompt, this is a really good tool for you. The second major advantage is the Google Workspace integration. If you live in Gmail, Docs or Sheets, Gemini is already there with you. It can summarize your inbox. It can pull items from your drive file. It can work directly in the app that you use every day. And you don't need to switch between various different tools. So really helpful if you're already in that Google Workspace. The third major strength is native video analysis. Gemini can process video files directly. You can upload the recording of a meeting or a tutorial and it analyzes the video directly, not just the transcript. ChatGPT currently can't do this. It can only do video transcripts. And given that Google already owns YouTube, you can also summarize YouTube videos really easily directly in Gemini. So definitely a really good tool if you love video. The fourth advantage is deep research. Now, both these tools do offer deep research, but they work very differently. Hello, Ms. Lady. I'm Brennan's stepbrother and... In testing, Gemini tends to scan more sources, roughly between 20 and 47 per deep research query. ChatGPT usually does fewer sources and it usually comes in between 7 and 27. Gemini often completes research faster, usually between 8 to 12 minutes, whereas ChatGPT comes in a bit longer at 10 to 17 minutes, albeit it probably comes out with longer reports. So Gemini does a good job of giving you a quicker, deep research report and giving you lots of breadth in the analysis. ChatGPT gives you depth. I'm usually a fan of having more resources so it avoids hallucinating. So hence why I think Gemini is a better one for deep research. So here's the bottom line. You should use Gemini when you have massive files, you need the Google Workspace integration, you process lots of video content, or you want fast research across many sources. So where does ChatGPT win when we pit these two together? Well, the first advantage is conversation quality. In my experience, ChatGPT feels more natural in dialogue. And I think it's better at understanding nuance across multiple turns. So if you're writing scripts or marketing copy or any kind of writing, ChatGPT is usually a bit better for that. The second advantage is memory and personalization. Both of these tools now have memory features that learn your preferences over time. And they both offer memory on their free accounts. ChatGPT launched their memory feature in 2025 and it's pretty sophisticated. Gemini also launched Save Info this year, but it wasn't quite as good. It is catching up fast, but ChatGPT has had it for longer, so you tend to get better results for your outputs given what ChatGPT knows about you. So if you're willing to share more information about yourself, you're likely going to get better responses because it can be personalized to what you want and what you do. ChatGPT's third major advantage is agent mode. Agent mode doesn't just chat, it actually can take actions for you. It can browse websites visually, fill out forms, run code in the background, and even book flights for you. Ironically, you can connect it to Gmail and other Google apps if you wanted to run tasks there too. Right now, Gemini doesn't have this level of sophistication, but again, it's kind of catching up on a lot of these things. 
One thing to note right now is that agent mode isn't available in all countries right now, so if you don't see it, it might be based on where you're located. The fourth strength is voice mode. Personally, I'm a talker, I like dictating, and I like speaking things out. And I find ChatGPT's voice mode, as well as its dictation function, is much better. You can very easily just chat naturally to ChatGPT. Exactly. Just chat naturally and I'll stick to that. I won't let any extra instructions affect how I respond beyond what you've asked. It might be because of my accent that sometimes the Gemini dictation function doesn't quite pick up what I'm trying to say. But ChatGPT's one is actually really good and that makes a big difference for what I'm trying to do in my day to day. So if you're a speaker, I recommend using ChatGPT. So the bottom line, you should use ChatGPT when you need a natural spoken conversation. You want personalization and memory to help you with your context. You want to use agent mode for some of your tasks, or you want content that is written better with specific voice requirements. So here's how to decide which one you should use in what scenario. So here's the simplest way to choose. Use Gemini when you have massive files that you need analyzing. Use it when you work in the Google workspace as it has a pretty good integration with all of their apps and tools there. If you love video content, definitely use Gemini. Or if you want faster research with more resources. Whereas you should use ChatGPT when you're writing content that requires a good tone or a specific personality. You might need agent mode to automate tasks. You want to personalize your experience by having saved memories on what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve. Or you prefer talking and like speaking out your thoughts back and forth with an AI tool. As I said, both the tools are very similar at a high level and they're both excellent at what they do. And both for the premium tiers cost about $20 per month. So if you have to choose between one, use the decision framework that I just outlined before. If you're busy across all those scenarios, you can probably use both of them. I actually use both of them in a lot of my day-to-day -day work and I usually switch between the two depending on the task at hand. So depending on your usage, you could go with a free version of one, free version of both, or pay for both. It just depends on how much you use it in each scenario. And definitely test out each tool on each scenario and see which one is better for you. The biggest mistake I see people making is trying to force a use case into one tool when it actually isn't great at that. So it's very simple to just try that task on both tools at the same time in the free version. It doesn't cost you any money and it'll only take a couple of seconds. But I want to hear from you. Let me know what you think the advantages and disadvantages of both tools are. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps me provide more content like this for all of you. I also share a weekly newsletter and you can subscribe using the link in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.